Okay, um, I'm from Illinois. I didn't think that would be such a point of contention tonight. <laughs> Uh, I do want to say that I went to the Pachashka in Chicago um, three months ago, I guess, and this one's much nicer. Woo! Uh, yeah. 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 Sponsored by an architecture firm, and it was very uh, commercial. And we should give a round of applause to the people who organized this tonight. Yeah. 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 Okay, my name is Matt uh, Kessler, and I'm with iRocket, and I'm here tonight to talk about my interest in the scientific imagination. I'm interested in these questions. What is scientific creativity? How strong is the interplay between scientific invention and popular fiction? And what would science's own artistic output resemble? So for my investigation, I chose the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, responsible for development of all high-tech American weapons. I chose DARPA because they so openly value scientific creativity. DARPA has always prided itself on attempting the impossible and being a deliberate counterpoint to traditional thinking and approaches. Let me tell you about DARPA's history. DARPA was started in 1958 after the launch of Sputnik 1. This opened the battlefield of space, accomplishing what America had not imagined or considered possible. DARPA was created to ensure that this wouldn't happen again. DARPA's always prided itself on attempting projects the scientific community and conventional wisdom deem impossible. Like what we're about to see next on this next slide, Project Orion. Project Orion was one of DARPA's inaugural programs. Its goal was to launch a spacecraft into orbit by detonating a nuclear bomb. <laughs> it, it didn't work out at all. I don't, I don't want to simply beat up on DARPA tonight. So, because uh, DARPA's mission of attempting the impossible has produced some really great successes. Uh, the internet, I'm serious, the internet, originally known as ARPANET, uh, global positioning systems and the circuitry of cell phones, all of these inventions which have, which have impacted our lives, admit it, they have, uh, they were invented by DARPA. So, now that that's done, let's start beating up on DARPA. <laughs> this next logo that you see is the first thing that really uh, catched my attention. And you'll notice the phrase here, bridging the gap. This refers to the gap between scientific creativity and modern day reality. I quote, Welcome to our world, a world where imagination and ideas enable DARPA to bridge the gap between the far side possibilities of tomorrow and the near side capabilities of today. The second thing to grab my attention was that DARPA's conventions are always held here at Disneyland. I'm serious. And it's odd to have a weapons showcase at a kids park, uh, yet this perfectly echoes DARPA's notion of bringing fictions to reality. We know about science fiction, and we know how scientists look in fiction, like Dr. Jekyll or Dr. Strangelove, for this guy. Uh, my question is, what role does fiction assume in science? How do our popular fictions affect scientific imagination? Discussing their inventions at the convention at Disneyland, DARPA scientists cited as inspiration Back to the Future, James Bond, R2-D2, Gandalf, HAL, CP3O, and Star Trek, Star Trek, Star Trek. Tonight I'll showcase the inventions that seem particularly indebted to science fiction. First, here we have Robo-Rat, a rat whose movements are controlled by a computer. This is real. Robo-Rat has two goals, military reconnaissance and the transportation of bombs. Does this, my question is, does this invention exist without War of the Worlds, Chronicles of Narnia, or Men in Black? These are the hybrid insect mems, and these are insects whose flight is controlled by a microsystem. Their microphones and video cameras have been inserted for spying purposes. This is real. In this speech, inventor Dr. Lau brags that his memes make the vision of Gandalf calling in air moth support for reality. Thank you very much, Dr. Lau. Okay, here's another fun invention, Luke's binoculars. These binoculars attach directly to the brain to monitor the subconscious. As soon as the subconscious detects fear, the binoculars redirect the soldier's field of vision. This idea comes directly from Star Wars, and it is not recommended for paranoid schizophrenics. <laughs> this is a Gale Blaster. 
It projects sound as a weapon. It shoots out direct acoustic energy for crowd control situations. It was tested on herds of goats, and it did not work. And uh, I think uh, <laughs> they got this idea from Ghostbusters or for your snack parties. I don't, I don't really know what, but, but uh, okay. Dark has also developed some really creative data mining programs. Like the other guy, uh, the policy analysis market was a stock exchange using real money that traded on future political unrest in the Middle East. Total information awareness is a data surveillance program, the ultimate goal of which being to monitor all human activity modestly. And these are from, directly from the fictive realms of Philip K. Dick and Aldous Huxley. This brings me to the final section of my presentation, the aesthetic output of the sciences, DARPA's logos, what purposes do these logos serve? <laughs> Which fictions do they glorify? Here, TIA's logo uses the eye of providence to emphasize the potency of data surveillance. DARPA's aesthetic design is not always so sinister. Like here, this walrus with wings. These designs are often comic and capture the absurdity of the weapons they represent. This updated Hanna-Barbera design is for a large weapon, a zeppelin the size of a football field that supposedly could tr uh, travel in air, land, and water. Uh, it didn't work <laughs> at all. Uh, to conclude, I'll look at four of Darkness logo motifs. First, animals. Animal designs are used to personify weapons to make the weapons seem kinder and more approachable. Uh, notice the Panda logo on the bottom left. Panda is a data mining program to monitor other countries' sea time activities. No pandas involved. Uh, just a cute acronym. Okay, the second motif I'm going to look at is science is fun. And DARPA likes to emphasize the whimsical nature of weapons. So we have bright neon colors and pastels that are used to emphasize that these are non-violent weapons. For example, look at the center icon, AMP, and we see cogs celebrating in front of confetti. You might not be able to tell from this representation that this program manufactures protein-based therapeutics, but whatever. The third motif is cyborgs are benevolent. This motif is a gentle reminder of robots' omniscience and goodwill towards humanity. We see the always classic robot at the head of the class design. We see robot hands cradling the earth. And we see the timeless merger of the half-brain, half-circuit. The fourth motif is the simple glorification of violence. Uh, coming up. The arms logo you see on the top left depicts a battleship with hands. These hands are stopping missiles and punching the ground. Uh, arms is actually a computer hardware and software upgrade program uh, that improves scheduling and resource allocation for the Navy. I think someone's got some delusions. <laughs> um, anyway, so my book is the National Science Fair of Amazing New Discoveries. It's also an investigation of the scientific imagination. It is a fictional account of scientists creating the most ridiculous inventions I could imagine, and then presenting these inventions with simple child poems. Um, I also made a little handout for tonight, and I've got some if you're interested, so just come by. It's about the cyborg, uh, the hybrid insect memes. Thank you very much for having me.